the August 22nd, 2017 meeting of the Oshkosh Common Council. Welcome to all in council chambers and those who are listening or watching, on, watching over Oshkosh Media. Would the city clerk please take the roll? Pat? Here. Paul Mary? Here. Allison Osby? Here. Herman? Here. Pansky? Here. Crozy? Here. Cummings? Here. Present seven. Uh, would you please stand while Councilmember Peck leads us in the invocation of the Pledge of Allegiance? We ask for guidance tonight as we begin this meeting. May all those who participate in our discussions and our decisions reflect the values that we cherish in this great city. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first order of a business on our agenda is a proclamation to St. Vincent de Paul Society, Inc., honoring 50 years of serving the people of the Oshkosh community. And we have some members here from St. Vincent de Paul, so please come forward. Like to hold your banner while I do this. Gotta face that direction, the, the corner. Whereas the Society of St. Vincent de Paul has served people in need regardless of race, origin, religion, or gender for over 50 years, and whereas St. Vincent de Paul provides food, clothing, home furnishings, and financial assistance to individuals and families in need, and whereas the St. Vincent de Paul Society initiates home visits to assess people's needs, offer counsel, extend a hand in friendship, and whereas the society plays an integral role in serving as the goodwill ambassador for the community, now therefore I, Stephen J. Cummings, Mayor of the City of Oshkosh, do hereby proclaim Saturday, September 9, 2017, as St. Vincent de Paul Society Oshkosh Inc. Day in the City of Oshkosh and commend the St. Vincent de Paul Society for the community work they do on our behalf. So thank you, gentlemen, in your society. And you'd like to say a few words? Sure would. Thank you. We appreciate the proclamation. I'd like you to introduce Bud Brown and John Fellner, who were very instrumental in getting us going 50 years ago. And we want the community to know we're very appreciative of all the support we get in trying to help others. It's been excellent, especially the last few years where we've relocated our, our thrift store and furniture on Jackson Street. Uh, we're participating with Advocap and United Way and 20 other agencies in the HUB program. And we're uh, very appreciative of the total Oshkosh area community that has been supportive. And as a result, we're helping us help others. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have a public hearing. It's a public hearing regarding proposed revenue bond financing for Paint Art Center, Center and Gardens, Inc. project. This requires three readings. This will be the second public hearing regarding proposed revenue bond financing for Paint Art Center, Gardens, Art Center and Gardens, Inc. project. Third and final reading, public hearing regarding proposed revenue bond financing for Paint Art Center and Gardens, Inc. project. We'll now move on to public comment. Public comment. Yeah. 
Aaron Shear, I'm the director of the Paint Art Center and Gardens. I've been up here before, so I don't know how much you want to hear from me. But this, um, uh, the Paint has uh, executed a number of uh, capital projects over the past several years. We're coming to the conclusion of those uh, capital investments, and uh, this financing is supporting the parking lot and the garden that we're constructing right now. This financing has been part of our financial plan since the very beginning, so it's not a surprise or anything we're doing <laughs> at the end. Um, and, uh, um, and, and r roughly of, of the funds that we put out there, some will be uh, paid back through campaign pledges that are coming in over time, and then others as part of our long-term financial plan that will be paid <coughs> through our annual operations and income. Okay, then any questions of Mr. Scherer? Thank you. Thank you. I would now like for a motion and a second. I would move for approval of 17-409. Uh, second. Discussion. Ms. Lawrence, and I think you can probably address it. Just, just to reassure the citizens, why is the city doing this on behalf of the pain? These types of bonds provide a financing mechanism that gives a little better interest rate for their investor. It's not an obligation of the city of Oshkosh. It doesn't count against our borrowing. We have no, no obligations to administer it. Um, all of that is taken care of through an agreement. We do have our bond council review the, the bonds and all the documents just to make sure everything's in good order but the, the pain actually pays the bill for that as well. So, so the city's okay. fully protected. And we have done these with the pain before. I know we did the YMCA, I think we've done a couple. Or is this the first time with the pain? First time, but you may recall you adopted the initial right. resolution for the pain. That was, that's the only one that we've done okay. to my knowledge. back in October. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions or discussion? <coughs> you please take the roll. Pat. Aye. Paul Mary. Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Herman? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Crozy? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Carried seven. Next is the first opportunity to make citizens to make uh, council uh, statements to the council. Statements are limited to five minutes, must address items that are not listed on the council meeting agenda, <clears throat> are limited to issues that have an impact on the city of Oshkosh, and the common council may address at a future meeting and must not include endorsements of any candidates or other electioneering. Is there anyone from the public who would like to speak, speak to the council at this time? <coughs> I see no one moving, coming forward, so we'll move to consent agenda items. These items are those of a routine administrative nature that are voted on by the council in a single roll call vote. Staff recommends approval of all items. Any member of the public or common council may request that an item be removed from the consent agenda for discussion. Two, report of bills by the finance director. Three, receipt and filing of Oshkosh Public Library minutes from July 5, 2017. Receipt and filing of Oshkosh Public Museum board minutes from July 13, 2017. Five, receipt and filing of common council minutes from July 11 and July 25, 2017. Resolution 17-410, approve option to purchase agreement with Bobble Link, Mitchell Falls, LLC, Southwest Industrial Park. Resolution 17-411, approve amendment to the specific implementation plan for mixed-use arena event complex located at 1212 South Main Street. Plan Commission recommends approval. Resolution 17-412, Approve extraterritorial preliminary plat Sand Hill Farms. Plan Commission recommends approval. Resolution 17413 was withdrawn by staff. Resolution 17 414 award bid to H.T. Martin and Sons Inc. for flooring replacement fire, for fire department stations 17 through 19, $44,250. Resolution 17-415, award bid for structure works for your parish for the convention center parking ramp, parking ramp $46,522. Resolution 17-416, approve amendment to engineering services agreement with AECOM Technical Services Inc. for Snell West Sanitary Pump Station and inter Interceptor Sewer 
$142,010. Resolution 17-417, approve change order number two for public works contract number 16-05, paving, sidewalk, driveway, and utilities, second local street concrete, concrete paving program, south side area, $44,978.81. Resolution 17-418, approved change order number one for public works contract number 17-04, paving, sidewalk, driveway, and utilities, first local street contract concrete paving program, near east side, $358,339.75. Resolution 17-419, Approve Edward Byrne Memorial Just Assist Assistance Grant in Prince JAG for Police Department in the amount of $16,285. The following eight resolutions are for special events, which I will not keep saying special event or 2017. The first is Resolution 17-420, Lords Academy, Academy to Utilize City Street through the Lords Academy Eucharist Procession, August 30th. Seven, resolution 17-421, First Congregational Church to utilize Brown Street for their Sunday School kickoff event, September 10. Resolution 17-422, Oshkosh West High School to utilize City Streets for the Oshkosh West Homecoming Parade, September 15. Resolution 17-423, Alzheimer's Association of Greater Wisconsin Chapter to utilize Oshkosh North High School and City Streets for the walk to end, to end Alzheimer's September 16. Resolution 17-424, Trinity Lutheran Church and School to utilize Miami Park for the music and worship in the park September 16 and 17. Resolution 17-425, Bella Medical Clinic to utilize city streets in South Park for the Walk for Life event, October 7. Resolution 17-426, UW Oshkosh to utilize city streets for the Tour de Titan, October 7. Resolution 17-427, UW Oshkosh to hold their 10th city at the UW Oshkosh Sports Complex, October 7. Resolution 17-428, Oshkosh Benevolent and Social Club to utilize the Riverwalk and City Streets for the Jeremy Monet Rock and Glow Fun Run, October 13. The final special event is Resolution 17-429, Business <coughs> Improvement District to utilize the 400 and 500 blocks of North Main Street for the Downtown Oshkosh Trick or Treat, October 25. Resolution 17-430, approved block party, Kim Williams to utilize Wheatfield Way between Roosevelt Drive and Timothy Trail to hold their neighborhood block party, September 3rd, 2017. Resolution 17-431, approved block party, Laura Pfizer to utilize Cliffview Drive between White Swan Drive and Graber Street to hold their neighborhood block party, September 16, 2017. And resolution 17-432 approved block party. Mariah Bennett utilized Evans Street between East Irving Avenue and East Lincoln Avenue to hold the neighborhood block party, September 23, 2017. Resolution 17-433, disallowance of claim by Mark Bradish. Resolution 17-434, disallow, disallowance of claim by James Lang. Resolution 17-435, disallowance of claim by Carol Velasio. Resolution 17-436, approve special Class B licenses. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak to any of these items on the consent agenda? I see no one coming forward. I'll bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Discussion? <coughs> Mr. Ravi, uh, 17418. Um, there's a memo in our packets, but just 350, almost $360,000 cost increase, just if you 
Th that's adding the concrete Edifying. paving of Eveline Street, which was uh, the utilities were done under the emergency declaration due to failure of the storm sewer and imminent failure of more of the storm sewer and sanitary sewer. Um, this is the actual concrete paving portion of it that's being added into that contract. Okay. Council Member Palmieri. Uh, yes, Ms. Nightforth, 17-410 uh, <coughs> on the option to purchase agreement with Bubble Link in the Southwest Industrial Park. Uh, just uh, kind of a, I guess, a little bit of a technical question. Um, at the end of your staff memo, you say that there's no value to the property and as far as the fiscal impact, but we are charging like 26000 per acre. So when you say there's no fiscal impact, no value, can you just be more specific on that. Sure, right. Um, if we would sell it, we would charge $26,000 per acre. So I believe that comes to 600 some thousand dollars that would be added to our industrial park fund, um, you know, that we would use um, to pay off some of the improvements that we have done in the park. Um, but as far as, you know, as budgeted items or anything, there's nothing that the city would be paying for. Right, so that no value means there's no taxable value at Correct. this time. Correct, at this time. It's but a the market one. value is based on that. Okay, Correct. thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any further questions or discussion? I see none. Would the city clerk please take the roll? Pat. Aye. Paul Mary. Aye. Aye. Allison Osby. Aye. Herman. Aye. Pansky. Aye. Rosie. Aye. Cummings. Aye. Carried seven. There were no items removed from the consent agenda, so we'll move on to pending ordinances. The first is Ordinance 17 437. Approve zone, zone change from A to ETZ General Agricultural Extraterritorial District to R 1 ETZ Single Family Residence Extraterritorial Territorial District, north side of the 3400 block, West 9th Street. Road in the town of Algoma. Extraterritorial Zoning Committee recommends approval. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak to this pending ordinance? I see no one coming forward. I'll bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. second. Discussion? Mayor. Husband Pell, Mary. Uh, again, it's <coughs> night fourth on the fiscal impact. Um, it says the zone change as proposed will have no impact on city services as the developments would be served by town and county. But it's my understanding that these are scheduled to um, come into the city by 2023. So at that time, so this says no impact on city services at this time. Correct. 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 But when it comes in in 2023, there would be. Correct. They'll all be on private septic systems right now, and then when it would be attached into the city, they would need to um, utilize city uh, utilities. Very good. Thanks. Any, any other questions? Would you please take the roll? Pat? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Herman? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Rousey? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Carried Aye. seven. Ordinance 17 438 approved zone change from U1 Industrial District to BP Business Park District for property located at 1919 Bone Street. Plan Commission recommends approval. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak to this? Bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Discussion? Questions? Just, Ms. Nyford, could you just kind of explain what this is? I, I know it's the car wash on Bowen Street. And Correct. Yep, it's the existing car wash on Bowen Street, just north of Musa, and um, the Ashkosh uh, Humane um, uh, Society purchased that car wash, um, really using it for future, you know, um, development. So they don't have plans immediately, but they um, are to the west on Shelter Court uh, with their existing facilities. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions or discussion? Would you please take the roll? Peck. Aye. Paul Mary. Aye. Allison Osby. Aye. Herman. Aye. Pansky. Aye. Krause. Aye. Cummings. Aye. Carried seven. We have three new ordinances. There will be no formal action taken on any of those at any of them at this meeting. The first is Ordinance 17 439. 
modify parking regulations on South Park Avenue. Ordinance 17-440, approve zone change from SMU Suburban Mixed Use District to SMU-PD Suburban Mixed Use District with planned development overlay, 1126 South Kohler Street. Plan Commission recommends approval. And the final is Ordinance 17-441, approve zone change from I Institutional District to SMU dash PD suburban mixed use district with planned development overlay for property located at 1816 Wisconsin Street. Plan Commission recommends approval. We have two new resolutions. The first is resolution 17-442. Approve amended payment in lieu of taxes in parens pilot agreement with Oshkosh Housing Authority and Wait Rug Housing LLC for property located at 300 East Custer Avenue. Is there anyone from the, pro the public that would like to speak to this resolution? I will bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Discussion? Do either Would you? Mark or Lynn maybe want to address um, why we are going about this or what we are doing. Apparently they had some issues with sure. their... I, I can address sure. it. The housing authority purchased and they are in the process of planning for the rehabbing um, a property up about the 300 block of East Custer Ave into low-income housing. Um, as the project has come through before you for some zoning and some other issues, we had the pilot, um, I think at the end of the June at our meeting, the project, as they're pricing it out, has come in higher than they're expecting for primarily two reasons. They were going to rely on historic tax credits that aren't paying off at quite the rate they had anticipated. And because the project was um, structured as public housing, it was subject to the Davis-Bacon rules, which increased the construction costs. Those two things um, needed to be addressed because it, it didn't come within their budget. So they, the housing authority met and they looked at it, um, reconfigured the project. It's still going to be low income housing, but it's going to be under the section 42 and um, section 8 housing programs so that the Davis-Bacon rules won't apply. So that addresses part of the issue that that in turn raises the anticipated income for um, the tenant rents, which would raise the pilot payment to the city. The budget can't bear both the increased cost of construction and the increased payment to the city. So they're asking if the, the city will um, take that pilot payment that was anticipated under the original low housing or low income housing agreement, which is about 14400 I believe, and accept that with a, an escalator each year to work our way up to the full payment for that, that um, higher rent uh, amounts due. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Are there any further questions? Oh, I might have misspoke on one thing. Okay. Oh, Can you correct me? I don't need to correct you, but I just no. do want to clarify. We'll need your name and address, Oh, sorry. Please. Susan Van Hollingen, Director of the Housing, Oshkosh Housing Authority. It's the low-income housing tax credit issue. The historic credits oh, are okay. fine, but I just thought sorry. I should clarify that. The historic credits we still will be receiving state and federal historic credits, but it's the low-income housing tax credits, and I know there's been some articles in the paper recently we ran into the same issue. Our investor was going to come in at a dollar one per credit. Now they've dropped it down to 91 cents. So there's a gap in the financing, which has caused this great angst. But otherwise, we're all good. So, so do you have a tentative timeline of when you <clears throat> start the project, or you don't know yet? We have to close by October 1st. Okay. We are still, we had great difficulty, and it's, we're getting there. Um, invest um, contractors didn't want to bid with the Davis-Bacon, but we're getting some that are coming through now. Um, they're busy. Sure. They don't not want to deal with the paperwork. Yeah. So we're, we're working through that, but um, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. <laughs> we're still rolling down the path. There you go. Hang in there. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. Any further questions? Would you please take the roll? Pack? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Herman? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Crosey? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Carried seven. Resolution 17 443 provide direction to Stafford Lane to Oregon Street reconstruction. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Uh, I know that there are some folks here tonight that want to talk to it. Um, the resolution that's been presented to you has all three options on it. My suggestion to council is to put the, mo put the resolution on the floor and then have council narrow it to one so that the discussion can focus on just one option rather than it, what could be confusing is all three. That way then the public would be aware of what the council was yeah. focusing on. That's my suggestion. So my suggestion would be put it on the floor and then immediately take an amendment to narrow it down to one of the three options that, that are listed there. We put all three options in the resolution. Okay. We felt it would be easier for you to see and navigate through it. Okay. So on page two, uh, all of the uh, options are there. So the idea would be to throw out two so that the, the public is aware of what one is out on the table. And with that, I would move for the adoption of 17443. Second. Move a second. Second. All right. Wait. So now my suggestion is, is that to immediately. We entertain a motion. And the public knows which option is being right. discussed. Um, I would move, uh, I'm, I would like to make an amendment to in the now therefore be it resolved by common council of the city of Oshkosh that the proper city officials are hereby directed to proceed with the design of Oregon Street as follows to strike paragraphs one and two. Second. Which then would leave reconstruct street at the current width of 44 feet, provide two eight foot parking, two eight foot wide parking lanes, two 14 foot wide driving lanes and provide the potential to maintain the separation of the right turn and straight traffic lanes at West 9th Avenue and West South Park Avenue. So we have a motion and a second. Now it's open to discussion. We have to vote on the amendment. That's right. Well, we can discuss the amendment or if there's the, anybody from the public that would like to public discussion. It. Now the public knows that the motion on the floor is the 44 foot wide option. Right. right. I just want to make sure people understood that. So now it's clear that there's, we're down to one option. So it's not open to public comment. Yeah. The amendment, yes. The amendment. Mm -hmm. It's, yes. yes. That's the option, yeah. Jennifer Byer, 1522. Uh, thanks for listening to the petition, I guess. And I did talk to some bus drivers and truck drivers, and they said, well, thanks for thinking about us. So. 15, uh, excuse 1522 me. 1522, Oregon. Oh, okay. Thank you. And Jennifer, thank you for all your hard work on this. I know it's not easy to go out and get all these signatures. Yes. We've we've gone through these things before, so thank you for your efforts. Is there anyone that would like to discuss the amendment? Is someone coming forward? So now you're just voting on the amendment. amendment. Mm -hmm. Would you please take the roll? Pat. Aye. Paul Mary. Aye. Allison Osby. Aye. Herman? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Rousey? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Carried seven. Now, Mr. Mayor, you should do the main motion now. The main motion. Which, which basically is, is now just the 44 foot. All right. So it's resolution 17 443, <laughs> provide direction to Stafford Lane to Oregon Street reconstruction. That is it, correct? Just ready. So, any discussion from the public? Bring it back to council for discussion. Oh, just oh wait. Wendy Drexler Byer, Oshkosh. I've lived for all my life. I just want to say Oregon Street has been a wonderful street all my life, and I thank you very much for voting on this. Address, please. 44. 136 Brockway. So I am on Oregon Street all the time, and it's a good street, and I'm glad that you've realized that. Thank you. Thank you. Very thank much. You. Is there anyone else who would like to address the council? I see no one coming forward. We have a 
now we take the roll. Mm -hmm. No, uh, I have some questions okay. before we move. Discussion. Mr. Robbie, this is a two-year project, correct? It will actually be more than that. Um, the first year of the project will be reconstructing Oregon from 8th to 16th. Uh, the second year will be from 16th to 21st. The third year will be from 21st to 28th. And then continuing on beyond the third year, it will be a sanitary sewer project extending south of 28th, ultimately coinciding with uh, Winnebago County reconstruction of Oregon slash County Trunk Highway I south of 35th all the way to Ripple. Okay. The citizens we've heard from, um, some are owners, some are rental property, so the assessments will be going out to the property owners, obviously. Um, could this be done in a, in a two-phase project? Um, I support the 44 feet in the business district of Oregon Street, but then it goes to a residential district pretty much when you get towards Smith School up to 20th, and I know we've made assurances to Oscar's Corp that it's going to remain the width it is going out from that point to the south to tie into Winnebago County. Is there any reason why we can't just approve tonight that first phase of the project and then because those property owners have not been notified, correct? Um, the, the letter that we sent out out of our office last week um, went to all property owners within 150 <coughs> feet of Oregon Street from the Fox River to 20th Avenue. Okay, and um, I've not heard from any of the, the, the property owners basically from the residential area, so I, I would really like to amend this motion to go ahead with it, but let's revisit the width of the road after that first part of the construction. I, I mean, does your staff have to do the whole project all the way through? No, our, our design this year will be focusing on 8th to 16th. Um, it will be about this time next year. You know, we originally first brought this to your attention in at the uh, second meeting in June. Uh, that would be a very similar timeline to where you know, we may be looking for the very same direction. Um, you know, if, if you want to, you know, make this uh, amendment just for this year or make this, you know, with decision just for this year and have us come back to you next year for, you know, 16th to 20th. Um, we could go that route as well. Um, you know, keep in mind we'll probably be bringing it to you at the same time so that we can continue with our design process uh, because we do have staff, you know, during some of their other time where they're starting design work already. And I know you mentioned that there's other stakeholders, obviously underground utilities that are not ours, that are fiber optic and things. Will that make a problem we think for those contractors um, I'm not sure what their current design parameters are if they're going to look at doing you know just the portion we're looking at reconstructing this year or if they're going to be looking at um, much more than that um, however the only design work that we're giving them right now will be from 8th to 16th um, you know you mentioned the private utilities um, you know there is a very significant fiber optic package that is a primary data connection from Fond du Lac to a Appleton for AT&T um, you know, they are one of the primary stakeholders that we're working with to try and get them the preliminary design. But again, what we're giving them this year is just 8th to 16th. Okay. And from 16th to 20th, um, if we did do the 40 feet, which is not what North Main Street downtown is, that's 38 feet with bump outs, right? Correct. So 40 feet would be what North Main Street looks like from New York Avenue to Murdoch without the bike lanes. Yes, the North Main from Murdoch to New York is 40 feet in width, but as you mentioned, it's you know two bike lanes and only one parking <laughs> lane. Okay. I'm just throwing it out there. I don't know if anybody else wants to comment on it. Just an idea that I got at this point because I, I think you know this whole issue could have been resolved a long time ago if that business district or the business owners would have worked with the city when we wanted to get a bid or an association. They've been way out in front of this issue for years, you know, when they first came up. Um, it is a, an issue to the fact that um, we're not hearing from all the owners that will be part of this. Quite a few of the people in the petition are renters, so they won't be paying the assessment. Uh, the owner will be the one paying the higher assessment for the 44 feet. But I do think it's a very busy street. Um, it's used as a... Uh, truck route, um, I'm just throwing that idea out there. I don't know if other council members would like to just go ahead and approve the, the whole project at this point up to 20th and go from there. How's the person, Paul Mary? 
I think Councilmember Herman has um, a good point because it does transition to residential and there is a school uh, down there um, that it may be worthy of uh, separating that out into phases. I think based on everything that we've experienced with this project, I think getting that public input that, that Councilor Herman, uh, Deputy Mayor Herman suggesting makes sense and we can certainly get that information out there. Um, the question that, that uh, Mr. Herman posed to me earlier was could we make it narrower and Mr. Robbie said conceivably we could make it narrower for that 16th to 20th option and we can certainly seek input from the public on that. Uh, before we come back with the CIP. The whole idea behind this idea was to get it out here so we got the input so we knew what to, to right. finally put in the CIP. So it makes sense that we get more input. And, and, and maybe I could bend the rules just a hair or to ask any of the citizens that are here, are any of them live past 16 and would be affected by a motion like this? Okay, just hang on tight. Another council member's got a question. Because then I'd like to really go back a step since we do have some property owners here and hear from them right away if we can do that. If Usually if you do make an amendment, you do go back for public comment. Okay. Right. So. okay. I'll open the floor. There's, no, the there's no second to the amendment. We haven't, right. I haven't proposed it yet. I'm right. just, it's, it's a discussion item at this point. I want to hear from so other council the, members. I, we're, I, just, I just had a question. Um, first of all, um, I think you have a very valid point. Uh, Deputy Mayor Herman. One of the questions, I did have two business owners, uh, one contacted me over the weekend and then another one today. One of the questions that they had uh, was um, in regards to that design where the businesses lie on Oregon. Is there any um, change in beautification or addition in beautification? They were curious if there would be any um, trees on the, the terrace, you know, um, and does that decision impact the um, the width of the street certainly in the 40 foot width that would be very possible in the 44 foot width that will be very difficult okay okay thank you yeah. so just to follow up on that mr. Robbie if you could what type of streetscapes are we going to have we're going to have basically the same type of lighting or we are going to go probably to LEDs like we have done but we're not looking at it decorative lighting or anything to I have not gotten into that with the transportation department at all and electrical division in particular, um, you know, as we evaluated the options, you know, certainly in the 40 foot option, we would have looked at putting trees and tree grates in because the terrace would have been wide enough to support that. Um, in the 44 foot option, the, the terrace really is not wide enough to support that, um, that addition. Um, as far as what is being proposed for lighting, we haven't worked into that level of detail with uh, the electrical division yet. But I, I do, um, Steve, if you, had those conversations with Scooter at all. I think this is on one of our lighting circuits. I believe it is. Um, preliminary discussions in general on these projects are they're looking at going with the taller, I believe it's a inverted acorn style pole similar to what is on Ohio Street. So it is not a cobra head style, it's slightly more decorative, but it's not the pedestrian scale lighting that is on North Main Street in the section from Fox River Irving or north of New York that was just done. Okay. So, um, but the decorative lighting that is there now, the black poles with the <coughs> decorative globes, uh, I'm not sure how far down it goes, but I think it goes from around 6th or so to mm, 16th maybe. Those are already I decorative. I hear 17th in the background. So. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, Those would be reused, right? Probably not reused because of the condition of the poles, but a similar style. I'm not sure if the light fixtures out there are the single or the double-headed style. Some of them may be the old double-headed style that's not utilized anymore. It's, it's a more of a single head style that is utilized. So again, it may not be the exact same fixture, but general discussion has been that in the historic areas, we're using the, the black pole that has a right. suspended um, globe underneath it. Yes, I believe that's what's there now. Because I just looked at it today, so <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that that's why I thought, well, why would we replace those? Because they seem to already have that decorative historic. Those are extremely old. Many of the light bases down through there, um, including the concrete bases, are in very poor condition um, to, to the point where if they're not replaced, they're 
going to need to be heavily serviced or replaced due to failure shortly after reconstruction. Got it. <clears throat> Mr. Roloff. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. It, it kind of goes back to uh, Mr. Herman's comment. When we drafted this resolution last week, we were looking at 16th to 20th. The very first whereas talks about reconstruction from 6th to 20th because they, it was before you would ask that question of me. Right now, the way the resolution as proposed, if adopted, that would be the whole thing. If we wanted to propose to narrow it, we would have to actually come back. So right now on the table, 6th to 20th would all be uh, at 44 feet per the resolution. Um, we could certainly talk to the neighbors and see if there's any preference, but right now, uh, assuming the adoption of this resolution, it would be, we would be working on a 44-foot street uh, as we begin the design process next year for construction of 16th to 21st in 2019. So just as a clarification, because that, that idea from Mr. Herman didn't come up until the last day or so. Right, and, and it doesn't mean we're gonna, we could still go to 44 feet next year based on citizen concerns or whatever. It's just that looking at, you know, both sides of the, the picture, I think, you know, we have heard on this issue, at least the business owners and the concerns that they have about parking and loading. And because unlike Main Street, they don't, most of these properties don't have that back lot opportunity like, like the Main Street properties do. Um, it's more like North Main from Irving on where they're, everything's on the front part of their, their businesses. So um, I'd like to make an amendment to resolution 17-443, uh, provide direction to staff Main Oregon Street that we do the uh, reconstruct street at the current width of 44 feet, provide two eight foot wide parking lanes, two 14 foot wide driving lanes, provide the potential to maintain the separation of the right turn and straight traffic lanes at West 9th Ave and West South Park Avenue from West 6th Avenue to West 20th, or excuse me, to um, West 16th, I believe it was, correct, Mr. Roa? Mm -hmm. It would be, for, for 2018 construction, it would be 6th, or excuse me, 8th, 8th, 8th to 16th. 8th through 16th, okay. Um, then the last sentence would be to from from 8th Street to West 16th Street. And I would second that. Now we have, it's open for public discussion. John Hens, 137 Brockway Avenue. Does this go up at all? <laughs> um, first of all, I think you're contradicting your own arguments. You're talking about it being a residential area and that doesn't need to be wider. It's also an industrial area. There's a massive industrial park just south of town out on 28th, 35th. All, the, all those vehicles are coming through. The only north-south arterial in the city of Oshkosh is Oregon and Jackson. So it's heavily used by trucks. You would want a wider street so people parking and getting their kids out of their vehicles or loading the kids at Smith School can get their kids into their vehicles without the trucks being so close. Um, as I said, you have the industrial park, you have Oshkosh Corp, you also have local small businesses. There's a glass company that's down there. You, your business is along Oregon Street. You know all the businesses that are down there. Um, just because of those businesses and parking, you have constant parking and people getting out and going into businesses. And it's a mixed use area. We have all these businesses that are just in the middle of neighborhoods. So I don't know how you can sit here and basically hold the community hostage by saying, okay, we're going to say it's gonna be wider up to here, but because it's residential, even though it's highly commercial traffic and a higher traffic load because of when the shifts change. I don't know if any of you live in the south side, but when the shifts change, there's a lot of traffic, it's bumper to bumper at each one, 2.30, 3 o'clock, 3.30, 4.30, constant. So I think you need to really think about this and make sure that it stays wider for community safety. Because if you're putting those kids who are getting out of vehicles two feet closer, you're gonna have doors that get clipped by these big military vehicles going down the street, you're gonna have semis that are <coughs> right up on people. I just think it's something you need to think more of 
and think about what you were saying when you were talking about this because the first thing you said there you know you have the vehicles that are going through this downtown area where all the businesses are how do they get there they have to go through that area they come in the 20th arterial they come in the, or the Oregon Street arterial so please keep that in mind while you think about this thank you is there anyone else who would like to address address the council on this proposed amendment I see no one. Well, I just wonder. We need your name and address, please. Still buyer 243 West 15th, right off Oregon. Um, I'm just curious why all of a sudden uh, you, like he said, why you would have to go back to a 40 to 44 foot uh, in an area where there is, like he said, a lot of parking and stuff. And it seems like if you're trying to get planning further out, instead of saying, well, let's look at it again next year. Why not just say 44 feet, that's it, all the way out? There's enough response, I think, to, to having it 44 feet, and I think it's a good idea to keep it that width for all the reasons that he said and all the reasons that people that, that live and work and drive on there. I lived on Oregon Street for 40 years, and I know how much traffic there is. 41 used to be, or I mean, Oregon Street used to be 41. All the traffic north and south went through Oregon Street because there was no Butamore Bridge. Well, if there'd be a problem on Butamore Bridge, it would all go back through Oregon Street again, Oregon and Jackson. So you're eliminating that cushion if something would happen where you couldn't go across Butamore Bridge for whatever reason. I mean, not that that's likely, but there's a lot of things that you never go like, oh, that's going to happen, and then it does. So it's it's something that you can. So if there's if there's a traffic jam even on a northbound, there are people that will come through the city just to avoid that traffic jam on the 41 if there's an accident or something. So it's to say yeah we can get by with 40. Yeah we could get by with 40, but it's not a bad idea to have a cushion on some road like he said, full north south. Probably one of the few that really is a straight shot. And it's easily accessed from South Park, 9th, 20th, and then you can get back on the other side when you're on the, on the other side of the river. You really don't have much of an access to you get all the way out to the end of Jackson to get back on 41. But it, it seems like it's a good idea to keep it at 84 feet. It's just, it's a, it, it, I think it's a no brainer. I mean, I think that that's a good idea to keep it that width. And as far as going to 40 feet, what, what's the reason to go to the 40 feet if it's already that 44? I mean, is there a, a savings, a gain, a improvement, or, or is this just something to say, well, let's go to 40 feet? Sometimes it's let's change stuff to change stuff, and it's not for the better, it's just to change. So I'm just saying it's, it seems like it would be a good idea to keep it 44. Sometimes it's a good idea to keep stuff. That's all. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the council? We have a motion and a second. Mm -hmm. Is there any dis council discussion? Mayor. Uh, yeah. uh, I support the 44 feet. I think um, the community itself has done a great job of spreading the word about this issue and kind of rallying the troops and getting everybody together. Uh, if you look through the petition, you can see the addresses reflected in here in the area that uh, Deputy Mayor Herman is talking about. Um, I believe that this issue has been brought to the forefront sufficiently. I don't see the need to bring it back, and I cannot support the amendment. I'll be voting against the amendment as well. Um, as it was indicated, I mean, this is significant industrial traffic to that. We have many businesses in the south. East South Industrial Park, um, and again, you've got a consistent stream of vehicles going from Defense on the north side to Oshkosh Corp on the south side, and vice versa. And um, this is a major thoroughfare. There are yes, you. It, it's really there is no true until you get to maybe. 
18th Street is where it, you could deem it to be quote unquote residential and that's only for two blocks or so. Um, so I will not support the amendment. Councilperson Allison Osby. Um, thank you. Um, I guess one of the things that we should probably do is address the gentleman's question about the proposed um, or one of the options going down to 40 feet. You know, is that a cost savings or was it just to make changes? There certainly is a cost savings. If, you know, as we previously discussed in the uh, 8th to 16th uh, stretch of the street, it was about a $300,000 cost savings um, going from 44 to 40. So constructing the street at 40 feet versus 44 feet is, you know, a significant cost savings. Is that over the course of the entire project or per that was section? Just, that was just 8th to 16th. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. So, um... I'm not using that. Um, I, I personally like um, the width of, of 44 because of a lot of the, the reasons that we talked about. Um, but with that being said, the reason why I would support the amendment is only because we're looking at that conceivably over a course this could take four to five years to complete, correct? Uh, the, uh, the way the resolution was currently written was just 6th to 20th because south of 20th we had it had planned all along on keeping four lanes of traffic. There is no parking in that stretch. So, but if I may ask, within the, the amendment um, that Councillor Herman was proposing, you weren't saying to narrow the street at 44. You were just saying, let's take a look at it in the event that something changes. Is that correct? Right. Uh, there's nothing in the amendment forces 40 feet onto anything it's just you just want to take a look at it in phases. I just in phases because it's a it's a three to four year project and well I want to hear from from more of the citizens that are affected by it and we're going this year to 16th and next year it's going so you know the question I hear from the audience is is that that they didn't know anything about it until it was brought up at council agenda. Well, is that the same issue with those that aren't notified of all this? You know. So, so may I ask one more follow-up question? Yeah, is, go ahead, Mark. So when okay, so when did the letter go out to the property owners and then anybody that's within 150 feet? That letter went out last week. Okay, so so there's been one week for people to respond. Uh, by the time it was received, you know, by you know, by the time it takes the post office to get everything, uh, probably a few days. You know, I I would bet it was probably received Friday or Saturday. In most cases, um, we're starting to see um, some longer delays in in mail getting to some of our residents from our office. So we're, you know, we're that, you know, so I would say it was probably received Friday or Saturday. And Councilperson Pelmeri. Yes, I I'd just like to say that uh, the reason in responding to the gentleman's question um, that I would support um, looking at this again is because there's evidence to show that um, when you do have a narrower sections of a highly trafficked street that it would slow that traffic down so there would not be the straight shot uh, so in addition to cost savings there may be some on that section um, between 16th and 20th who would like to see the traffic slowed down. Uh, obviously, not everybody is here to speak to that. Mr. Goldie. I did just want to bring up that the uh, Pedestrian Bicycle Committee, before it was on their agenda, I believe in July, did send that notice out to all the abutting properties through the first phase. Thank you. you know, Mr. And, and do you want to? Uh, Mr. Robbie, I I was in a meeting with Mr. Godey last week and it was made very clear to me that you guys wanted a decision tonight because of your budgetary constraints and you wanting to get this project rolling. If we do break this up in phases, what does that look like? I, I was told that if we didn't give you guys clear direction tonight, as we were instructed, that this could double the cost, this could put it out a year. I was told a couple different things of the consequences that would happen if we didn't make a decision on this tonight. So if we do break this up, what potential consequences are we facing? You mean if you break this up being, you know, give us direction now on 8th to 16th and then discuss other parts of it later? Is that what you're asking? Well, is or? there a cost savings if we give you the project in its entirety at 44 and you know what you're dealing with 
Is that beneficial to your department to get it all done at once, or is it a hindrance to you and Public Works to break it up into sections? Um, certainly it would streamline our process and give my design staff more time you know, if we get direction on the entire project. Um, if we just get direction on the 8th to 16th portion, I would look at starting this process much sooner than we did this year, next year. So instead of you know, starting to talk about it in June or July, maybe we would start talking about it in May, April, so that we can you know, get the process done so that when my staff is available to do design, you know, we've got the direction already. And do you anticipate that the cost of doing that would be increased by putting it off in year one, year two, year three? I'm not quite sure I follow what you're asking. If, if, we, if we only do a certain section now, would it be more expensive for those other sections down the line? For you and your staff to look at it, not if we not if we do it earlier in the year. You know, if we if it gets later in the year, then certainly there are implications. But if we move it up in the year, then I don't see any implications. But it is easier to get it all done tonight. Certainly, then we we would have our direction going forward for you know that entire length of the project. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you, Councilman Peck. Um, there may be evidence related to street width and speed going down a street, but there's actual irrefutable physical evidence that we have in the city of Oshkosh that Oshkosh Tor Corp trucks are not getting any smaller. <laughs> Oshkosh Corp is not going away. Oshkosh Corp has, has was just awarded a significant contract related to the new, <coughs> new uh, JFTV. JFTV. Thank you, mm -hmm. Mr. Oshkosh Corp. So it comes down is in my mind that additional four feet offers an offers safety and I think it's incumbent upon the the citizens to police themselves and start to drive courteously they're speeding all over this city and I think that that's something that needs to be addressed but the fact is these trucks are not getting any smaller and I would imagine next generations may be getting actually bigger as the, uh, the, the, the threats that they face change. So again, I, can't, I, I, I won't support this amendment either because it just does not make <coughs> sense. Well, from my standpoint, I think that the consideration too, there's a school that takes up almost a block on Oregon. Um, and you're right, products are gonna get bigger I think this street is going to be here for the next 50, 60 plus years, and I think we can't make the decision based on today. It's what's going to happen in the community in the next 25, 35, 50 years. And I think we can only expect an Oshkosh Corporation to grow. That's going to, there's going to get more traffic. What is the future of Oregon Street? Will it become all residential someday? Will it become all commercial? Will it continue to be mixed use? Will there be a bigger school built to replace Smith at some point? Um, I think it's a safety issue, and uh, I know from the uh, experience with the reconstruction of Bayshore Drive, all the delays in, should we have sidewalks, shouldn't we have sidewalks, how far should they go? It delayed that project uh, my months, and it caused a lot of problems in engineering. And, you know, things became, I think, kind of a scramble at the end. I think you're looking for a clear direction, and I think I think we owe it to you and the engineering department. Here is the direction. And I think safety does come first. And I think safety and the future of that section of the city. So I will not support the amendment either. Mr. Mayor, um, to speed the process up, I'll withdraw my amendment and go back to the original approved. What's going on? Obviously, it's going to lose 4 3. Um, I was just thinking, looking at some of the um, addresses and things I guess we're hearing from all of Oshkosh because there's a lot of Northside people uh, who signed the petition that probably work at Oshkosh Corp or other businesses or use Oregon Street quite a bit. Um, it's going to lose in a 4-3 vote, so I'll withdraw the motion. Um, you need the consent of this second. Yeah, okay. I would consent to that. Right. Okay. So we're back to the ori original amended resolution. We have a first and a second. We've discussed it. Would you like to take the roll, please? Yes. Pack. 
Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Ellison Osby? Aye. Herman? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Krause? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Carried seven. Are we all clear on it's going to be 44 feet from beginning to end? <laughs> can we can can we get our can we get the past 20 minutes back? <laughs> Moving on, uh, council discussion, direction, city manager, and future agenda items. Uh, follow up TIF workshop, August 28th at 5 p.m. We can all make that, I assume. And we got some input from council on some changes or additions to the okay. agenda. We appreciate that. There's still a little time. If you if you have any change right. of heart between now and say Thursday, we, the quicker we get it to you because it's a Monday workshop, the better. And uh, if necessary, we'll we'll email it to you. But if you see anything else that you want to uh, add or have questions about, please let us know. Following that, the next evening is a budget workshop. That will be number two, and that's at 5 p.m. Doubtful will have handouts or handouts prior to. It'll be more just a uh, hands-on workshop, and we'll provide information at the meeting. And just for some clarification, the budget workshops are clearly identified on the city website, correct? Yes, they are. The They're scroll. televised. And they no, are I mean, on the scroll. So as it was said previously, we don't vet the budget enough, and there's not enough oh. ability for the public to come. And while they may not be able necessarily to participate in a workshop, but they that it is out there. There's the opportunity for them to attend and hear what's going on. City Clerk's website has all the agendas that are for upcoming meetings. Okay. And then on September 12 at 5 p.m. is the Extraordinary Service Charges for Special Events Workshop. Now we're at the second part of the meeting where citizens. Oh, no. Oh, one more. Excuse what? me. It was amended. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right here. And then there's an, an addition, which is a, a special events policy review, Councilperson Palmieri. Yes, thank you, Mayor. So I've uh, shared uh, a document with council members, Ms. Rolap, and Ms. Lawrence, and the clerk. Um, this relates to direction that um, Mr. Roloff apparently did not feel that council gave with regard to uh, specifics on our special events policy. The um, task, the special task group dealt specifically with the special event extraordinary service charges. Um, I just wanted to uh, direct council's attention to our minutes from March 14th and um, several emails that were uh, broader than just the extraordinary charges and that March 14th meeting um, the mayor council member Herman uh, council member Allison Asby and myself um, mentioned several other items so I'd like to have council discuss and give clear direction with regard to Mr. Olaf's addressing that. Um, we only had the task group uh, address the scope relating to those event fees, and there were other items that we had asked about uh, in relation to looking at the different types of events whether or not they were alcohol or non-alcohol events, um, comparison of other communities, and possible maximums. So I just put that out for council to address, given that I was under the impression that we would not be looking at only the fees, but the special events review to our policy over and above those fees. My only comment is that the motion adopted by council was to refer the resolution of the fee schedule back to staff. There were a lot of comments made, but the council didn't incorporate those into any specific direction. Staff focused on fees entirely. 
uh, if council has a desire to look at the entire special event policy or the ordinance then I would need the, all of the, the full council to give me that direction but staff worked on the fees and I think some of those items were incorporated in there I know that discussion for example with alcohol that was discussed within the committee and they felt that that wasn't necessary given the fact that alcohol related events typically have more people that's typically what the police department does that's just one example those questions can certainly come up at the workshop I think it's appropriate but in terms of the special event policy of itself staff did not believe we've received any direction in spite of these comments this is the first time I've seen the memo but um, in terms of council uh, direction I felt that it was exclusively about special event fees so if, if I miss uh, took that I apologize but that's what I felt the direction from council was Mr. Roloff if I can just kind of go a little farther in um, I think I know I, I brought it up about looking at um, maybe not reviewing our whole policy but just kind of how some of the other communities list <coughs> in their it's like uh, a look-see that if you need police it's this cost if you need fire it's this cost I thought we were going to look at some of the other communities like Eau Claire I think has a very well laid out in their special event policy I thought some of that was going to be part of that I think the document Ms. Snell sent us in our packet on Friday explained a lot of what we're looking for but I, I do think there's a few gaps yet um, and and some things but maybe in the workshop we'll, we'll be able to discuss them and get to them yeah I think if and they even go further with what we want to see then after the workshop if there's any gaps that we feel are still miss, missing fortunately because of the timing that we're doing this I think we have some time and if there are some missing gaps the council can certainly give us some direction at the at the workshop to work on any number of items and bring them back the idea is to get a resolution adopted by council so that when we're planning 2018 events that we have a fee schedule that everybody can rely on um, and I think they can answer those questions I can't right now off the top of my head because I only attended one uh, uh, meeting with that working group Ms. Snell Mr. Maurer they were the ones who who spent a lot of time with them and I think they can I think they'll be able to answer those questions and it sounds like Ms. Snell providing you that additional information over the weekend give you a little more uh, to understand the depth with which the committee worked I think they spent a lot of time addressing those issues and uh, hopefully they've uh, during the discussion will be able to identify those issues and address them I just add to this that um, Mr. Olaf you had affirmed that minutes would be provided from that work groups meetings in those minutes and um, we don't even know from this report who took part in that task group and Mr. Mauer's communication that the only thing that would be provided is this one document and no further documentation is in my opinion not adequate that we should at least have the names of those who participated and those minutes from those meetings I believe we provided you names of all the people who were part of the work group you did no minutes. I gotta be honest I don't remember that was done months ago I'm just saying I don't remember yeah yeah to, I to, just, the, to that follow-up though how because I know there are a lot of people that wanted to be on that committee we wanted to keep it to a working group an ad hoc committee that was something that you recommended and council agreed to that um, but at the same time how are we going to get back to those all the special groups I mean I, I know we have a list and I know that the, the, that a lot of the special event coordinators work very close with our special event coordinator the CWB, <laughs> all those different but before we approve all these things I think there needs to be a little more of an opportunity to kind of like we did tonight with the with the Oregon Street we had a great <laughs> discussion and in the end we got to where we wanted to get to and um, you know and I think that's the same thing here because I think we want buy-in from all the special events that are coming to Oshkosh knowing that it's a it's it's a you know, concise package of information that they're going to get when they come here to apply for a special event permit and one that if we have questions or the community has questions we can easily answer to them so um, I'm thinking that's something that we, we need to get a document before we approve document changes to some of those groups that weren't able to participate I, I think that's a great suggestion um, we have three weeks 
and I wasn't going to be sending something out early because especially with right. Labor Day, but I think that suggestion is appropriate that we, we let people know they can come to the workshop, they can listen to it. Yep. Council's not going to act at the workshop, right. the resolution won't come, and you may not give us, you may not want to finalize anything even there. Um, you're going to want at least one more uh, opportunity to look at the final resolution before you vote on it. Right. And because of the, all everything that took place, I think it's appropriate. So we'll uh, we'll get the word out to the the folks who are expressing interest. Invite them; they can come to the workshop. That's not typically a workshop is not an opportunity to speak. It's not a public hearing. It's right. everybody can look in, listen in type of thing, and that would be appropriate. Do, to that point, do you think with some of the changes in the fees, changes in the fee structures, that it's going to be like a ordinance change, a resolution change. What you know, the fees obviously the council fees the and shop. things like that. So there would be some public opportunity for the public to weigh in. It would be a resolution. We, we designed the ordinance so that we didn't have to amend the ordinance every time we updated the fees. So we do it by resolution. It would be a resolution because what council did was they said, "We aren't going to change the fees for this year. Please go back." Please take a look at the new fees and and make a recommendation. So, following the workshop, we'll be making recommendations. But we're going to want to know after that workshop, right. are you okay with yep. with where this is going? And um, if we do do some policy change or some ordinance change, then we would have to bring that back through the whole right. cycle of, you know. Yeah. And do you I want, do you want any further input? I mean, I think we're I think we're starting our workshop tonight. <laughs> um, well, would you like a, a, is there a drop dead date would you would, that you would like some suggestions from the council for things that we would like discussed at the workshop I would ask that you provide that information uh, really uh, no later than Tuesday the fifth the day after Labor Day yeah. um, that would give Ms. Snell a week to to get ready for that workshop on the 12th that would be helpful um, and I think that's a, that's a great idea um, okay. I just want to point out one thing, Mr. Herman, that you said the group that it was a working group of stakeholders. Right. It was not a committee, right. and and that was part of the reason that you know if there were going to be any minutes, it was going to be note taking for for staff. And I said if we had them, we'd provide them. It wasn't that we would absolutely do them, but if we did them, we would provide them. Uh, and I apologize if if um, Kathy sent out everything she had. Um, there's not anything that we don't have that we haven't given you. It's just that. Uh, we can only give you what we have. Um, I'm sorry, I just wanted to make sure I had the nope, committee nope. thing clarified. Councilman Peck? I, I think part of the whole reason of establishing this working group was to, because we basically waived any increase in fee for 2017, and there was a great hue and cry about the fact that, oh, oh woe is us, we're going to have a budget problem. Um, the question that I have is, is and this may be something for the um, the workshop, but we are in our budget planning right now. Is there a, even a tentative schedule of fees based on this yet? And if not, when would that be available? Because That'll I think be that first and foremost is is the key to all of this. And, and if I do recall, I, I think that there was that the process of this whole special events thing was a bifurcation, and that we were one looking at the fees, and then secondly we were going to review the policy. Uh, Mm -hmm. And we'll, so I think that we that we can't lose sight of the fact that we need to get these fees buttoned down before we pass a budget because these fees have a distinct impact upon our budget moving into 2018. The purpose of the workshop is to give you the philosophical basis upon which the working group gave advice and staff is going to be proposing the fees. Because the fees are going to change every single year based on cost. So the philosophical approach has to be nailed down first so that we know there's, and the committee talked about predictability. So I don't know if we're going to have the exact numbers for you on the 12th. I think it's an appropriate request and we'll try to do that. But it's going to be based on assumptions for next year's budget. We're going to make some assumptions in the budget. You always have to make assumptions in the budget. So that'll be based on where we think the numbers are going personnel wise because all those costs get built in the rates will ultimately get determined the, the final rates will have a good estimate based on initial budget projections and we've talked about those with you at the first council work session 
two and a half percent, certain increase in health insurance, things like that. We can probably put it together, but it would still be subject to final review and approval by the council. It is kind of a, it's a moving target, but I think it's not moving so fast we can't give you a snapshot of where it's going. Is that, is that kind of where? So Kathy, you, you heard him, thank you. Ms. Snell heard you. <laughs> question oh um, miss pants can go. Oh. Uh, go one thing I'm assuming that you and Kathy are working on a, a potential agenda for this or, or not as, as we as you okay. are speaking we are taking One thing I'm hoping that we can look at is a, and I think council member Herman kind of hinted at it but a possible look back clause um, on any sort of reimbursement for any charges that are extraordinary that maybe we find later on um, and I put look back clause in in quotes there is a loose term um, some sort of mechanism for them to come back to us as a as a possible oversight or some mistakes that we had made uh, maybe putting something like, like if we that overcharge in. or something yep. like that yeah typically we and don't then, charge until after the fact so hopefully that doesn't we'll, take we'll still just to kind of cover everything and, sure. and have something in stone uh, that protects them and us thank you. thank you um, I guess since um, there seems to be um, some misunderstanding, I think we interpret that we give direction. And what I'm hearing um, from staff is that we're not giving direction. So here, here's a suggestion, because this is something that, that we come across in a number of issues. And it's good. I mean, the, the workshops, staff does uh, an enormous amount of work to prepare for those. But they typically take us right up to the last minute, maybe a couple minutes to spare. So again, we always get into kind of the, the cycle that there's never any true discussion among council. Um, again, we have to have our discussions in a public format. So I guess what I would ask council um, to get buy-in on, to give direction to staff, is after the September 12th meeting, um, where it says council discussion and direction to city manager and future agenda items, then we address some of these things that we want tackled in a policy with a time frame of when we want the policy done. Then that way, there's no room for any misunderstanding. And that goes back to Councilmember Peck's comments that it's all part of the budget process. So if we're changing the policy, and it may have some direct impact to the monetary side, obviously, we would want to do that it's sooner than later, obviously, so that uh, staff and everybody can be all on the same page and get the document to us. If there's no further discussion on this item, we'll move on to the second chance for citizens to make statements to the council. They are to address the council only. Statements are limited to five minutes. Must address items that are not listed on the council meeting agenda are limited to issues that have an impact on the city of Oshkosh. And the common council may address at a future meeting and must not include endorsements of any candidates or other electioneering. <clears throat> Is there anyone coming forward? She's spoken once. Oh, only in public session. Okay. Only on, on Wendy on. Drexler Bayer again, 136 Brockway. When I was getting petitions, I was told that our Saturday market will be moving to someplace else. Is that a fact? When? We, we aren't. Uh, that's a separate yeah. organization. That's not the city of city. Oscar's fund. That's I, not a part I, I, of the I'm sorry, I did not understand that. Okay. And, and it's they choose to move it. That's their decision. So that's that has nothing to do with the city of Oshkosh? Mm -hmm. Farmers Market, Oshkosh Farmers Market LLC. Okay. Their okay. office is uh, on Main Street next to the Rocks. Okay. The old King Cliff Building. All right. Thank you. Sorry mm -hmm. about that. That's okay. No. No. I see no one else coming forward. I will bring it back to council member announcements and statements. Council member Pansky, you have something Thank you, Mayor. to Thank you, Mayor. I just want to remind everybody that Friday, September 1st, everybody in, well, I guess from anywhere, uh, you can ride on our buses for free. So all day on Friday, September 1st, if you haven't ever tried out the bus, now is the time to do it. It's free. So hop on and see where it takes you. Thank you. I'm going to add one thing uh, 
remind everyone that the lighting of the last bridge over the historic Fox River will take, take place this Thursday, August 31, at about 8 p.m. at Fox River Brewing. So it should be a fun event. Hmm? What, what organization finished this lighting project? Uh, well, the part of the foundation and so forth. Yeah, next Thursday. The 31st. Yep. Oh, did I say this Thursday? Yep. Mm -hmm. Out of town. Uh, <laughs> oh, and now it's time for city manager announcements and statements. Mr. Roloff. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, re really just a couple reminders. The Imagine Oshkosh workshop, which is really the central city uh, investment strategy, uh, coined Imagine Oshkosh. Workshop and presentation is going to be September 6th at 6 p.m. at the Oshkosh Convention Center. Uh, we're going to certainly publicize it. Council's absolutely welcome to come and attend and see some of the ideas that are coming up. We want to get feedback on what things have been put together so far. Um, you know, there was a discussion about Sawdust District. Sawdust District was one of the offshoots of it, but now we're bringing it all back. Uh, we've talked about it in previous meetings. That's, that'll be the opportunity. Um, a reminder that at the September 12th meeting, the changes that Council had given us direction on will be implemented. Um, I'm having some concerns with the kiosk and I'm not going to guarantee it will be absolutely there. We have a paper backup plan. I have an, a dedicated staff who's remaining optimistic that we're going to get it done. And I, I thank them for that optimism because I had suggested it and they're, they want to keep doing it. But I just have to make sure we're careful. And as, as Mr. Herman said to me, sometimes the high tech isn't always the best tech. We'll find out. I still like the idea. But if not, we're going to have the cards because that's originally what council wanted was cards so that the, the public could could register so we'd have them. So at, at, at worst, we'll have the paper version um, and hopefully high tech um, soon thereafter. And remind me, Mr. Roloff, too, um, were we going to have like a practice session with the technology before yes. that date? There is a dry run for the mayor and that I can't remember what, is that going to be on the, the 11th. on the 11th, so. We have the electric shock going in for the council members who don't follow the rules. <laughs> Oh, our chairs are going to be wired? Yes. <laughs> speak too long. I've got, I've got the panel. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going there. Um, <laughs> and then there's the arena update that's, on, uh, that's in the agenda packet for your review. And happy to answer any questions. Uh, I see no one. Uh, Deputy Mayor. Mayor? Yes. Nope. May I say before um, Deputy uh, Mayor Furman um, makes a motion to go into closed session, um, I will not um, be participating in the closed session tonight um, just because of concern for myself that there could be any perceived conflict, uh, conflict of interest. So I will not be present. Um, and as far as um, the motion to go in, I will, I will vote present as well and not participate. All right, thank you. Deputy Mayor Herman. Thank you, Mayor. I move that following the adjournment of this meeting, the council may convene into closed session to discuss possible amendments to the TIF development agreement with Fox Valley Basketball, Inc. for the arena project where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session pursuant to section 19.85, parent one, parent E of the Wisconsin State Statutes. Second. Please take the roll. Pat. Aye. Paul Mary. Aye. Alice Mosby? Present. Herman? Aye. Pamsky? Aye. Rosie? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Carried six, one present. I would like now a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Adjourn.